Today we're going to be talking about helping verbs and verb strings. I admit, prior to seeing this textbook, I had never heard of a verb string. I honestly don't know if this is something that all grammar books have, seeing as how I have only ever taught from this book, but it does make me wonder. Well, anyway, the purpose of the verb string is to help you understand better how to conjugate verbs and how to use helping verbs. So I can see the use in it. All right, so helping verbs are anything that we add to the verbs in order to give them an auxiliary meaning, which is why they're also called auxiliary verbs. In this case, in our first example here, we actually have the helping verb of have. So our subject is puppies, our verb is have eaten. Now if you think about how we work with the English language, we can tell people present tense, what is happening in the present, past tense, what has happened in the past, but we also have the past participle, and we can also talk in future tense. So, in other words, the helping verbs are part of the way we indicate time, or when we say we're going to qualify something. All right? The past participle is what we're dealing with here. Earlier in the chapter, before they get to the verb strings, they have you conjugate verbs, and they specifically have you conjugating irregular verbs. English has several irregular verbs, and it's important to keep in mind Many verbs we try to keep in a simple um, construction. So we say the infinitive form or the base form of the verb to laugh or to smile. Well, laughs, laughed, smiles, smiled. The word does not change, in other words. That is a regular verb. It's an irregular verb when it changes forms, like eat, because we say to eat. So she eats, she is eating, she ate, past tense, she has eaten, past participle. Notice that's where your helping verb comes in to help you create the past participle. So irregular ver verbs really do change the entire spelling of the word as they go. So, this example, helping verb and past participle, have eaten. So, they're talking to you about how to create that. Well, have is the present tense form. The infinitive form of the verb have is to have. We have puppies, so we have to use have. <sighs> now, as confusing as it sounds, they don't want you to change to past tense form of this verb, because if you just went to simple past tense, it would be had. The puppy had eaten, it would also indicate it was singular. So weirdly, they have you marking time first with whatever comes after it, okay? So they're saying, use the present tense form of have, to have, even though it's past participle. Doesn't that just make you want to scream? <laughs> and then they're telling you which version of eat to use. Again, the tense is going in front of the verb. You have eaten, so it is the dash en, and please do not forget this dash here. Dash en form of to eat, eaten. So you're going to indicate at the beginning of the string, and in the middle of the string, as you're moving between auxiliary verbs, or helping verbs, and the main verb, to eat is the main verb. This is your helping or auxiliary verb. You're going to indicate the tense first, not afterwards. I personally found that to be a little bit confusing, I'll be honest. It made better sense to me logically to say eat and then indicate after that what version of eat but that's not the way they're doing it. All right, this sentence here. The cats 
will be eaten. We are in the present tense for will, but we are actually talking future tense. You have an ing in order to do that. The past tense of will is would. It's irregular. So, if you had would, you would want to say past plus will. Past plus will indicates the sentence will have the word would in it. So you're not conjugating. That's the most important thing I can say right here. You are not conjugating any of these verbs. You indicate to the person reading your verb string how to conjugate when they write the sentence using these markers. So, present plus will means literally will plus, don't forget the plus signs as you're making the string, plus literally the word be. To be is the infinitive form, and you didn't conjugate it, so they wanted you to say be. I don't know why. It just works that way. Then they want you to indicate which version of the verb to eat you are using. The dash ing, again, don't forget your dash, dash ing form of to eat, eating. The cats will be eating, future tense, puppy chow. I understand if you feel like I just put an algebra equation on this board. It kind of does remind me of basically the language form. The language form of an algebra equation. It's all very strange. Alright, so again, the most important thing I can tell you about the verb string is to make sure you don't conjugate as you go. So don't say eats here or eating here. You have to put it in front. So this includes saying, in this case, if it were eats instead, dash s plus eat. She eats. Dash s. And indicating, of course, all the helping verbs that may be in front of the verb. Of course, in some examples, there aren't any. So it just depends on which question they're asking you. Okay. Exercise 11, earlier in the textbook, is very important since it is making you practice conjugating your verbs, the irregular ones. Some of them, it's like basically irregular and then regular verbs. The other thing I would like to note for you is you do have a problem with the answer key in the back when you're practicing your exercise because they say on exercise 12, that the subject of the sentence is supposed to be they, but then that's not what they show you. They act like it's a singular subject on the answer key. Oops. So, unfortunately for exercise 12, some of the answers in the back are wrong. All right, this will be the only chapter in which you deal with the verb strings. Again, the point is to make you think about how we're using the verbs, so it's not like it's without value. But it is not as important as learning to diagram, which is basically almost this entire book. And also, as I mentioned earlier, basically the point of the course if you're going to be teaching English. But you do want to get through this well, and you want to do well in your quiz, so if it's not making sense, as always, do please contact me, let me know so I can help you. Okay.